friends uh, today we will discuss about the fourth head of income that is income from capital gain you are all aware that we have got five heads of income income from salaries income from house property income from business and profession then income from capital gain and finally the income from other sources the first four heads are specific the first four heads cut salary house property business and profession and capital gain and what are all the rest that will be merged and treated as income from other source let us see what are all the income which will be taxable under the head capital gains and we are aware that section 45 to 54 of the income tax act deals with the income from capital gain what is gain and how it should be taxable under the head income from capital gain there is a basic thing that we are supposed to understand the act itself explain what is capital gain it is very simple the gain arising from transfer of capital asset you can easily understand the two terms are very very important the one is the gain arising from transfer of capital asset if the stock is transferred then it will be taken as profit the only when the capital asset and we are all aware what is meant by capital assets we can say the fixed expenditure the capital expenditure which has been incurred which will have returned for more than one year that we will take it as a capital asset when the capital asset is transferred the gain arising from transfer of those capital asset will be considered as capital gain and before we go further you should understand there is some exception given in the act itself for the term capital asset that we should be very much clear what all the assets though it is capital assets but not considered as capital asset for calculating the income from capital gain the very very important point that you can discuss as the exception exception to the term capital asset the first point is stock in trade generally we come across stock for example why i am not specifically mentioning this stock for example i am a car dealer car is a capital asset which is going to be used in the business for more than one year but i am a car dealer i am keeping the car as a stock when i sell the car whatever the balance or excess i get it will be taxable as income from business and profession it's a profit for me therefore when any capital asset kept as stock is not a capital asset for example i am a real estate owner i am having buildings i am having lands so all those things are stock for me therefore when i sell a land i am a real estate broker or owner to me it is a stock when i get any extra money that will be taxable as income from business not income from capital gain that is the first point the second exception we can say the goods of personal effects it is for personal use for dresses vessels what all the household appliances i am having in my home all those things are taken as including dresses vessels and all it is considered as personal effects but it excludes jewelry it is not a capital asset when any personal effect is transferred you cannot take it as a capital asset therefore it is it will not does not attract capital gain the third point is 
agricultural land agricultural land very important point is in rural area when the agricultural land is situated in urban area that will be taken as capital asset when the agricultural land is situated in rural area it is not a capital asset the fourth point we can say 6% gold bonds special bearer bonds the special bonds issued by the central government only for this purpose so there is very very important thing these first three things are very very important so we can understand these things are not considered as capital asset for calculating the capital gain the next thing that we are supposed to understand and remember that is we should have the exception to the term transfer for income tax purpose when we calculate the capital gain there are certain exceptions which cannot be considered as transfer at all so because the definition itself says that the gain arising from transfer of capital assets we have just come across what are the assets which are not considered as capital asset now we can just see what all the transfers that are not considered as transfer for the purpose of capital gain the first important point is the transfer of assets transfer of assets at the time of liquidation to shareholders what is mean by liquidation you are all aware when the company is closed it is called liquidation at the time of closing up of a company when the assets were transferred to shareholders it is not considered as transfer that is very very important point that you should remember the second point is partition of hindu undivided family so hindu undivided family normally in southern parts we are coming across this type of business are very very few whereas when we go to the northern parts of the country many family are having their own business entity which is called as hindu undivided family when the head of the family is called karta when he was died when he expired the business will be closed the assets will be transferred to the members it is called partition of huf so when the transfer take place at the time of either partial or full partition of huf which not be considered as transfer at all for income tax purpose then third point any transfer of assets from holding to subsidiary company so already the last year when we have studied you might have studied corporate accounting that you are very clear about the term what is meant by holding company and what is meant by subsidiary company a company whose shares more than 51% was taken over by the another company is called as holding company the company whose tax shares were taken over by another company which will be called as selling over shares will be called as subsidiary company so actually holding company means when you purchase the shares more than 51% automatically the control will go to that company because in company you are very much aware that it is not one man one vote there one share one vote if you have 100 shares your vote will be 100 when you have 1000 shares if you raise your hand that will counted as 1000 so therefore any asset is transferred from holding to subsidiary company is not a transfer similarly vice versa from subsidiary from subsidiary to holding sometimes the assets may be transferred from subsidiary to the holding company that is also not considered as transfer then 
another point will go in case of in case of merger merger and in case of amalgamation so this also you may have studied in your corporate accounting amalgamation absorption reconstruction what is amalgamation there are two companies which is going on which are going on and it are to be closed and a new company is formed which is called in case of amalgamation two existing companies will be closed down and a new company is formed in case of amalgamation so when the assets were transferred under the scheme of amalgamation that will not be considered as transfer at all and let us see few other points there are about 20 points i will just explain to you the important points which you are supposed to remember when you calculate the income from capital gain sometimes that is conversion of preference shares to equity shares so we know very well this what is meant by preference shares and what is meant by equity shares the preference shares will be transferred as equity shares it is not considered as transfer and sometimes other securities similar to that when the bonds were bonds were converted into shares it is also not considered as transfer and there are about 20 points that we will discuss about but majority of these things will not be applicable while calculating the income from capital gain just you can understand only three or four items and and you should know the theory part what are the trans transactions which are not considered as transfer for the purpose of capital gain now there are two types of capital gains now it is very important to remember there are two types of capital gain one is called as short term another is long term when a capital gain will be taken as short term yes if it is a listed securities we should know what is meant by securities broadly speaking we will have only two types of securities one is called shares the other one is called dependencies including of bonds normally securities means shares and dependencies if it is listed what is meant by listed it is very clear when it is registered in any stock exchange in India, then it is be called as a listed security. Now you can just understand if a listed securities was transferred within 12 months, within 12 months, it is called short. Then what is the next point? If it is unlisted securities, or the we can say immovable property immovable property the immovable asset you can just can you tell me what are all the assets which are immovable it's very clear only one asset which is not movable in the world that is called land and building only land and building is an immovable asset all other assets you can easily move from one place to another but it's not possible for the land and building so if it is a unlisted security or an immovable asset if it is transferred within 24 months it will be called as short term for all other assets it should be 36 months you can ask can you tell it as one year two year three years 
okay well and good we can understand like that but the act says only months and we should also remember and we have to tell only the points the words which are used only in the act so for listed securities if it is transferred within 12 months it is called short term when the unlisted securities and immovable assets you can write land and building it should be within 24 months for all other assets it should be within 36 months this is called short term then what is long term very simple very simple if you just remember this then you can easily explain what is short term long term long term is just opposite to this any asset if it is transferred after after if it is a listed security if it is transferred after 12 months it is called as long term capital gain the gain arising from transfer of a listed security is after 12 months for unlisted securities and for immovable assets it is after 24 months for all other assets it is after 36 months so you can understand what is short term what is long term and we must have three classification of assets listed securities unlisted securities and immobile property that is land and building and all other assets gold silver machine anything all those things we will take it as other assets so therefore this is the clarification based on that we are supposed to determine whether it is short term or long term if you sell a short term asset the gain will be taken as short term capital gain when you sell when you transfer the long term capital asset that will be called as long term capital gain so we should understand first what are all the short term and what are all the long term you should have a clear difference between these two why this is very very important afterwards when we go and calculate the taxable capital gain the short term is considered differently and the long term will be taken as differently because tax rate itself different and the treatment is also different now i will just tell you what are all the differences we are going to see now first when we enter into the problem we will enter into the problem there is another relaxation given by the government for those properties which has been purchased long back because of inflation you can understand because i might have purchased 20 years back if i just deduct the cost with now the selling price i am supposed to pay huge money as tax therefore the income tax act has given relaxation to the assessee which is called cost inflation index now it is the third time which has been revised this cost inflation index the central government while considering the consumer price index it fix the cost inflation index value and it was started from the financial year 2001-2 it is 100 now our financial year now what is we are coming across it is 21-2021 it is 301 what will happen that means 100 now it is 301 if i have purchased any asset say for building for 10 lakhs in the year 2001 now i am selling it for 50 lakhs if i just calculate the taxable capital gain 50 lakhs is the selling price the cost is only 10 lakhs the 40 lakhs which i get surplus will, will be taxable as capital gain now the income tax act gives you the remedy you can say 100 that is what is the cost multiplied by what is the present CAA value 301 divided by 100 
you will get 3 times more. The value will increase into 3 times. So, 10 lakhs will be 30 lakhs now. 30 lakhs, 10,000. You have sold it for 50 lakhs. You are supposed to take tax only for 20 lakhs. And you should be very clear that this cost inflation index will be applicable only for long term capital gain. If it is short term, you cannot apply this cost inflation index. If it is long term, then only you can apply cost inflation index before calculating the capital gain. So that is a relief for the people. Three times I am getting. Another question you may ask, sir, any property has been purchased before 2001 and 2. What is the remedy? Yes, for that also there is a remedy. If any property purchased before 2001 and 2, what you should do? You are supposed to calculate fair market value, FMV, on 1-4-2000. 1. Fire market value. So, I have purchased a building in the year 1990. Otherwise, I, my father have purchased. I got it as an ancestral property. He purchased in the year 1990. So, if I compare with 1990 cast with this selling price, there will be a huge amount for which I am supposed to pay tax. No, don't worry. You can easily calculate what is the fair market value as on 1-4-2001. For example, I purchased a property in the year 1990 for rupees 15,000. You are supposed to calculate the fair market value as on 1-4-2001. It may be 3 lakhs. So, you can calculate the cost 3 lakhs multiplied by 301 divided by 100, not 50,000. So, there is again a relief. Any property is purchased before 2001-2, you are supposed to calculate the fair market value. Based on that, you apply the cost inflation index table and you calculate the present cost. The balance will be the taxable capital gain. So, this also we must remember. And moreover, for all the years in the income tax books, they have given the value. You need not remember it. When they say 2004-5, they will give the index value. It is 125. When you say 2008-9, they will give 137 as it is given in the table. Definitely in the question, what is the cost inflation index value for the financial year in which the transaction took place will be mentioned. So, this you have to remember. And lastly, before we enter into the problem, there is an important point that we are supposed to remember that is called exemptions. 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 There are about Eight exemptions of which we are supposed to remember under section 54. So, all these things we will detail and we will discuss in detail in the next class.